move on to the intrinsic shoulder muscles termed as the scapulohumeral muscles we talked in the previous session about the extrinsic shoulder muscle those were termed as the posterior axial appendicular muscles arranged in two groups superficial and deep now we come to the intrinsic shoulder muscles firstly we will talk about the deltoid deltoid muscle you know takes origin in three ways in form of three fibers anterior middle and posterior middle fibers are named as the lateral fibers over here anterior fibers are called they take origin from the clavicle uh, middle and the posterior fibers to origin from the scapula if you recall clear now of supply of the deltoid muscle axillary nerve very important two divisions of axillary nerve you could recall anterior and posterior division function of this deltoid muscle very very important anterior part flexes and medially rotates the arm middle part abducts the arm and the posterior part extends and laterally rotates the arm of this this abduction is very important now please note the beginning of abduction of shoulder joint this movement the initiation is not done by the deltoid 0 to 15 degrees 15 to 90 degrees that is the mid range of the glenohumeral shoulder abduction is done by deltoid so deltoid performs mid range of glenohumeral abduction or shoulder abduction not the initiation initial 0 to 15 degree right now what is this if deltoid is paralyzed what will happen then this rounded contour of the shoulder will be lost due to atrophy of the muscle paralysis of the muscle there will be impairment of mid range of shoulder abduction main functions will be lost what else there will be sensory loss you know axillary nerve posterior division that supplies a part of deltoid along with the anterior division the posterior division mainly gives a branch that, that is named as the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm that will be paralyzed so in this particular zone shaded in red known as the regimental badge area because in the people in uniform wear badges along this zone so that is named as regimental badge area the sensation over here will be lost over this part of deltoid clear so that we say as the regimental badge area of other area sensation is lost in axillary nerve palsy clear so next group of muscles intrinsic shoulder muscles are from deltoid will be termed as the rotator cuff muscles four muscles shall comprise this which are these subscapularis supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor use this mnemonic sits s for subscapularis i for infraspinatus t for teres minor not major minor and s for the remainder supraspinatus so you can say supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis these four okay right now let's see the supraspinatus muscle is supplied by which now suprascapular now main action initiation of abduction of the arm that means shoulder joint and assist deltoid in that function clear so it initiates and assist initiates abduction and assist deltoid in the abduction of the shoulder joint right what about the infraspinatus muscle nerve supply same suprascapular nerve like the suprascapular muscle action lateral rotation of the arm and help to hold the humeral head in glenoid cavity of the scapula right now come over here the remaining two muscles teres minor supply by axillary nerve posterior division action lateral rotation of the arm and helping the same action as infraspinatus helping hold the humeral head in glenoid cavity of the scapula right what about the subscapularis supply by upper and lower subscapular nerve action medial rotation and adduction of the arm and helps hold the humeral head in the glenoid cavity right that's the instruction made easier for you subscapularis lesser tuberosity upper part of greater tuberosity supraspinatus next to it just below it infraspinatus and teres minor most inferiorly and posteriorly 
and also greater tube porosity. These three and greater tube porosity, subscript porosity, and lesser tube porosity of humors. These are insertions. Now, this is a butsa present just below the acrimonial process known as subacrimonial butsa. It extends to the zone below deltoid. Clear? Now, what happens? Quite often, there is tear of supraspinatus muscle. In that case, this butsa gets inflamed known as subacrimonial butsitis. In that condition, what happens if the arm is adducted? You the butsa is present just below the acromion process. So if you press just below acromion process over here, there will be a pain. But if you abduct the shoulder joint, then this butsa will slip on the acromion process just beneath it. It will shift upwards beneath the acromion process. So if you press over the deltoid now, then the pain won't be elicited. And that is named as the low bond sign. I have written it for you in subsequent slide. Clear? So let us come to a question. Which of the following is not grouped under rotator cuff muscles? Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, teres minor? Obviously, major is ruled out. The other three along with subscapularis are forming rotator cuff muscles. Clear? So teres major is ruled out. To sum up, name the rotator cuff muscles. Mnemonic sits I have mentioned. Calf deficient inferiorly, that's why shoulder dislocation occurs mostly inferiorly. Most common rotator cuff muscle affected supraspinatus. Subscapular is also termed as forgotten muscle because of its deep location, right? And lastly, what I told you, the Dobon sign. Yeah. When the pain is elicited, when you press upon the deltoid, just beneath the acrimonian process, when the arm is adapted. When you abduct the arm, the parts are disappears under the acrimonian process, so pain isn't elicited over there. Clear? Yeah. That's the thing that happens in Dobars and it will totally shift upwards, so press over here, no pain will be found. Okay. That's all. Thank you very much.